Hi, my name is Mark Fetters and I am the owner of Lobo Gun Leather and here we're here today to talk about how Lobo Gun Leather came to be and, and our purchasing of it. Back in 2011 we were doing work as uh, in, in fine woodworking, carpentry, blacksmithing and uh, we were making some knives and uh, we seen a need in the knife making for having high quality leather sheaths to go with our knives. And looking in the area of, of leather, we seen that it was going to take a fair amount of equipment to be able to make some of the nicer looking products that we had seen and that we'd like to make. And the other thing that was going on at the same time was we were chicken farmers and we had 170,000 laying hens that we had and our buildings were starting to get older and I had a son that didn't necessarily want to go to college and enjoyed working with his hands and so what can we do? And that's where these two kind of came together and merged. We seen the need, the need for leather in our area and we enjoyed working with our hands and creating the multitude of products that a, that a leather allows us to make. Uh, one of the things that we did early on was making leather holsters. We also uh, started making in 2012, started making saddles and uh, hunting supplies and wall hangings, uh, western bags. We made women's purses, concealed carry purses. So all this stuff started to come together and uh, making the myriad of products that we made under the Sioux Leather name. And part of the reason why we did such a large array is being in an area uh, as diverse as what we lived in, we needed to have a variety of products in order to appeal to the different uh, people in the area, whether it be somebody who was concealed carrying or the woman that was looking for a fine high-end leather purse or the gentleman who was looking for a saddle for his horse. So we end up learning how all these different uh, areas of leather working functioned and uh, how to do them, which ultimately has made us much better leather workers than if we would have just picked out one area and tried to excel at that. It has given to us a large genre of knowledge. Fast forwarding to the beginning of May, we end up coming down with avian influenza. And if you don't know what avian influenza is, once it, it, it's a disease that once it hits the uh, flock of chickens or ducks or geese or turkeys, what it does is it's 100% it's deadly. And so when that hit us back in May, it completely wiped out what was our livelihood. And we were in a position where what do we do? How do we, how do we support ourselves? Um, where do we get the money that we're going to need to just s to provide the food for our daily living? And knowing that our buildings were old and not having a great desire to go back in and get into a de indebted situation with the expense that it was going to take to buy birds and to redo the buildings, uh, I had seen that Ray, Corey, had his leather business for sale toward the end of May. But reading how the fact that it was in Pueblo and that I would probably have to go down there to uh, learn the trade, it was one of those things that I just kind of put off as, well, that's not something that we're going to do right now and I wouldn't be able to do it to take my family and completely move all the way out there to learn, to learn his business. Well, as the summer went on, we were still just not knowing what we were going to do, where things were going to go. And in August, the beginning of August, I thought, well, maybe we're just going to need to work a little harder on the holster side of it and to expand the, the, the holster side of our leather business under the Sioux Leather name. And so I thought, well, maybe what we, I should do is give Ray a call and if he had any product that he would have for sale or his blue guns, uh, some of the mold guns that he would be willing to uh, sell us. Being as I seen that it didn't look like he had sold the business at that, that time, I contacted him. And in talking to him and finding out what he was doing and uh, how things were going, uh, 
I decided to take my family up there in the beginning of September and check it out. So we went up to Ray's place and we spent a week with him. We went in his shop and seen how he made his holsters, his techniques, uh, learning some of the product line and being able to just go through how his business was running in the past and where he's seen it for the future. And it ended up looking like something that we probably could easily take on and uh, continue running with it. So it was at that time where we decided to make the decision to go ahead with the purchase of Lobo Gun Leather from Ray. And it has been an exciting time getting to learn the process and one of the things that we had Ray do was in no, around the first of November Ray came down and he went through the first production runs of holsters that we were going to make and so I really appreciated how Ray has taken his time to help us out and to show us the the leather business or his side of the leather business of the uh, holsters being able to to go through and have him there and uh, to, to learn it all. And so, even now, if I have a question, we have Ray on staff where I can give him a call and immediately we have, some, we have his expertise and knowledge in different areas. And it's been a fun learning experience and we enjoyed working with the customers that we are getting to uh, work with and to uh, continue to put out the high-end products and quality of the leather the leather side and the Lobo name and so as we go in the future here our goal and our desire is to keep on making the highest quality leather holsters that we can put out so as we continue in the future here, continue to look for different improvements and different designs that may take place here as we continue to expand the gun leather side of Lobo Gun Leathers.